Let me introduce myself. My name's Diane Sorrentino. I'm a Beretta team shooter. I'm actually the captain of the team shooter, and that's just because I'm like the oldest, I think, right? So by trade, I'm a shotgun shooter, sporting clays, fetas, and what I do have some pistol, a fair amount of pistol experience. I'm a retired law enforcement officer, 26 years. So I know a little bit about carry, thank you. Thank you very much. I know a little bit about carry and concealed carry, but honestly, after speaking to this great panel and some of the ladies here, I don't know quite as much as they do. So I'm hoping that we're gonna impart some of that knowledge on everyone else. So let me introduce, see I'm old, I have to put my glasses on, okay? Let me introduce to you one of my teammates and one of our pistol competitive shooters with Team Beretta, Jessica Hook. Now, Jessica's been competing in action shooting in this sport for eight years. She's a ladies champion in various three-gun events, PCC, rifle, and carbine competitions. So Jessica is going to be one of our, our panelists here today. Thank you. Next, let me introduce Annette Evans, founder of On Her Own. It's a social media project and website where she shares what she's learned about women and how you can survive and defend themselves and thrive in the world today. And there's Annette. And last but not least, <laughs> we have Beth Alcazar from the USCCA, and she's an, the author of Women's Handgun and Self-Defense Fundamentals. She's also the associate editor of Concealed Handgun Magazine, which I'm sure most, most of you get, right? Okay, and she's a certified instructor, senior trainer, counselor, and she's enjoyed nearly two decades of teaching in the firearms industry. So welcome. Sounds good, right? <laughs> okay, so today our goal is to share some of our thoughts on women and concealed carries. And with Beretta, what we like to say is be your own defense, right? Okay, so let's kick this off. Jessica. Yes. Tell us a little bit about what you do with Beretta and how that also works into your concealed carry. Yes, so I do competition shooting and I was doing competition shooting before I started carrying for personal defense. So I kind of came with expectations of what I would want in my handgun um, based on what I had trained with so much. Um, so for competition shooting, I have currently, I'm really focused on carry optics, which is a division where you have your red dot on your handgun. And so for my carry pistol, that was now that there is a, a new APX A1, that was exactly what I want. I'm like, finally, excellent. I can translate what I'm doing in competition with my concealed carry. I can use the same exact optic that I use in competition on my carry gun. So in competition, I, I have all the time in the world to prepare. But for concealed carry, if I was ever in a personal defense situation, I have no time. I, all, the all the preparation should have already been done. And one of the things that um, I like about the new uh, features of the A1 is the improved texture grip because for, con for competition, I use chalk on my hands. And in a high stress situation, your hands are instantly sweaty. And so I love the, the really ag more aggressive texture of the A1. So um, my hand is never slipping. Even when we did this promo video, I was, when we were using the actors, the thugs, I was drawing under so much stress that I had never experienced in competition. My heart was pounding, my hands were sweaty, I was sweaty, the, the uh, temperature outside was sweaty, like, but I could get the same exact draw every single time. And then for concealed carry, I'm going a little long, Am I, is that okay? That's okay, <laughs> you're good. Uh, for competition shooting, like I said, I, ha I have as much time as I need to take to pull the trigger and with the personal defense under a high stress situation, I want a trigger that is reliable and consistent every single time. And so this uh, concealed carry trigger is a little bit heavier, but to me that's a safety feature compared to my competition gun. I never want to have an accident. I never want to under stress like tense up and accidentally pull the trigger. I don't ever want that to happen. And so that's not going to happen. I feel so safe and comfortable with what is, go what, uh, is going on with the trigger. Great. I so. mean, uh, and that was a great explanation when we talk about the A1, about the aggressive grip and, 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 the, and the additions that have been made to it can only help in that situation. Yeah. Because when we talk about high stress situations, 
I mean, your nerves are going to be here, you know, when we get excited. So but let's talk about that a little bit. Our, our, our mental preparation, our physical preparation. And I know the last couple of days I've been kind of picking Annette's brain and I've been learning a lot of new things. And I'm wondering if, Annette, you can share a few, few uh, tips for us in that area. So first of all, I want to point out that Jessica has mentioned every single feature of this gun that I'm really liking. And like, I don't get to talk about this. Really the trigger for me, because my background includes competition, but I started in the concealed carry world and that's where I spend most of my time now. And one of the things that I think about when I carry a gun for self-defense is, am I ready to actually use that against another human being? I want to be really, really sure that I am. And that's something I have to think about every time I put a gun on before I go out. Because I don't want to decide or find out in the moment of an attack that I'm not actually ready to do that. So one of the things I'd encourage all of you to do is think really, really hard today, tonight, tomorrow, every time you put on a gun, am I ready to use this to defend myself? But the other thing I want you to think about, it's not just about, well, what am I gonna do to this other person, is how much do I matter, right? My, one of my mentors, Kathy Jackson, once told me, you are worth defending. You, all by yourself, are worth defending. And it makes me tear up every time. So that's the other thing you need to think about every day, tonight, go home, every time you put on that gun. You are worth defending and worth doing what it takes to keep you alive or worth doing whatever it takes for you to go out on your own terms. Excellent. Thank you for that. And Beth, what can you add from the educational side for us? I just love what both of these women have said, and it's, like, it's echoing a lot of what the ladies have learned in our classes over the last couple days. We talked about aggressive grip, and I was like, you go ask someone. I'm terrible with microphones. <laughs> Like you go ask someone a, for an aggressive grip and they're going, what does that mean? Well, let me tell you, I'm the mom with a gun here. That's all I am. I'm just a mom with a gun. If I don't have an aggressive grip and I've got applesauce and baby drool and all sorts of other crumbs and stupid crap on my hands because my kids are very sloppy, I need that aggressive grip. And in the heat of the moment under that stress, that's a huge benefit. That's one of my favorite things. And I haven't even seen this gun, touched this gun or had any interaction with this gun and I already like it just for that. So this mom with a gun is saying, you know, A plus for you. But also on the mental side of things, a lot of times I turn the question around on people when they're like, oh my gosh, how could you even carry a gun? That's so dangerous. And aren't you a terrible mom? What a terrible mom. You're a parent and you have guns. And I'm like, okay, not only are you worth defending, but look around you. Who are you with? Who are you with right now? Who are you with most often? And when it all boils down to it, for me, I've got three reasons. My oldest child, my middle child, my youngest child. Without me, who defends them? And without a firearm, where's the equality in the fight? And it, that's all that it is, it's that simple. You are all worth defending. Wow, so true. That's, that was, that's awesome, thank you. <laughs> You know, as I look around the expo and I see the people come up to our booth and they're, they're, they're handling the different uh, pistols we have out there or they're looking at different holsters or way to carry this, um, this concealed carry. So who can touch on what, what should they be looking for? Should, we talked about the gun a little bit, but... I know Annette's laughing because we talked about this a lot. What should they be looking for maybe on how to conceal it? Maybe some tips in that, in that area. I'm all discombobulated. Who's going to go, Beth? I'm going to go okay. because I'm all discombobulated and I'm ruining my microphone. I sat on it. It's just falling out of my pocket. It's, it's okay. Pinch, it's pinching my ears. <laughs> it's pinching my head. I'm going to be the problem child. I'm just going to go. I'm just going to go right now, okay? <laughs> I'm just going to get it over with. Um, we actually teach in the women's curriculum for USCCA that we have to follow the facts F-A-C-T-S, some of my ladies were in the class, the facts when you pick out a holster, it needs to be functional, it needs to be accessible, it needs to be comfortable enough that you don't hate it and you say, well, I'm not going to carry this gun because this is pinchy, pokey, and painful. It needs to be tough, it needs to be durable enough. You're holding a gun with ammunition, that is not lightweight. 
you know, that is not easy to carry. That's not like a couple ounces here. We're talking, we're talking something hefty, depending on how big the gun is. Maybe this one's nice and light. You don't have to worry about it. And then that most important thing in facts is the S needs to be safe. And it needs to make sure that it retains that firearm no matter what you're doing. Ladies, if you're picking up those kids and they're crying, you're holding their hand, wiping their boogers, is that gun still where it needs to be? Or has it moved? You can't have a gun that's floating around your body and you don't know where it is now because your son just kicked you in the ribs when you picked him up. Or when you leaned over to pick up the groceries. Or get, We're talking everyday life. Consider everyday life and make sure you transpose facts into your everyday life so you can comfortably, safely carry a gun that could save your life. So important. You know, and, the, and with law enforcement background, you know, I always think about my duty was to, I needed to protect that sidearm. Whether I was carrying on duty or off duty, I need to protect it. So that's something you need to think about and your equipment needs to be comfortable. But Annette, go ahead and add a little something to that. First of all, Beth, I love that facts paradigm because it covers all the major aspects that we really need to think about, especially that big safety aspect. So that's the number one thing I look for holsters. The next piece is, you know, I want to look good when I'm carrying a gun. I don't want to have to wear baggy clothes. I don't want to have to, you know, dress like a boy unless that's the goal of the day. So finding a way to conceal that firearm, and what I'm, one of the things that's great about the A1 carry is it's a tiny little gun. It's still very shootable. It still gets the job done for me when I need to shoot it, but it's also really easy to conceal. So, you know, there's a lot of concealment principles out there, as Filster likes to call them, on where to place that gun on your body, how to make it more comfortable. But here's the number one tip I have for you in that area. It's going to take time. You have to have a little patience. You have to do a little experimentation. It is absolutely okay if you don't pick up a holster and put it on your body and go, well, it's perfect. We're done now. It can take weeks, months, even years. You know, I've been carrying a gun for over 10 years, and last year, everything changed again. You know, new products come out, new ideas come out, new guns come out. You don't know yet, so keep exploring, keep working on it. You don't have to settle for what you have today if you're not perfectly happy with it. And if you are, you might find something that makes you even happier a couple years from now. So stay open-minded about that. That's great. Great tip. You know, I want to lean on Jessica on this, this kind of topic or question that I'm going to lead into here. So we, we get the gun. We got our great APX A1, brand new. Okay. We got a great holster we feel comfortable with no matter what you've chosen what do we do now do we train <laughs> i was just about to say yes training is so important and if i hear a lot of i, I won't say there are excuses about not having money to take a class there is now YouTube University where you can get all of this information for free it helps to take a class just because when you have a one-on-one -on -one, um, engagement with an instructor i feel like somehow that information sort of sticks a little more. You're trying to perform and make sure you do things right for a person. So taking that class is really important if you have the time and that you can. But if you can't, go ahead and you know, do your due dil diligence online. Find that information. And then dry fire at home. Completely un dry fire means no ammunition in the gun. Don't have any am ammunition in the room. Mm -hmm. Just completely empty. And practice that draw stroke in front of the mirror. Practice it without the mirror. Um, you want to see that it feels natural. You want to, if you're, you know what clothing you're planning to use, make sure you're using that clothing in dry fire to see that, you know, I, f I for one of the tops that I, I might use, it might be a little too silky and my hand just never gets that good grip on that fabric. I'm like, okay, I'm never going to use this one. <laughs> yeah. So at home, you want to dry fire, you want to practice. Um, and then besides practicing the draw, practice shooting. <laughs> Go to the range and use that specific gun with the exact ammo that you're going to use. So uh, it might be expensive because, well, I'm going to say how to cut down on the expense because you're using the really good like hollow point ammo, right? So, well, you can get light, like 115 grain bullets have that same snap that like a 
like a, maybe a plus P might have. So you, you can use cheaper ammunition, but make sure that you cycle through the actual ammunition you're going to carry because maybe it might even cause a problem. Maybe your recoil spring just d isn't friends with that ammo that you chose. So you want to make sure that the ammo that you choose cycles with your gun, and then you want to practice with it. Great. Awesome. You know, and true story here, right? My sister tells me she wants to have a concealed carry, and I'm like, oh, boy. <laughs> okay. I go with her to the class and everything, but I found that she benefited mostly through repetition of the training, of the practice of the gun, how to handle it, and she was comfortable. So I think that all the components are very important, but training and, and knowing how to fire the gun and knowing how to operate it or knowing what to do when the, when the gun fails. So all excellent. Now, what I want to do is I want to ask, we got a great crowd here. Does anyone have a question for our panelists? Come on, don't be shy. No, no, oh, we got one right here. Okay, she's asking, what's our panelists, what's your favorite way to carry? Beth, go ahead. They're probably going to cancel my microphone because I'm like, <laughs> totally screwing it up. Blame it on the blonde. Fine. Just go ahead. Go ahead. Um, I'm wearing one of my favorites right now. I typically carry two guns on me. One I usually appendix carry, and one is my backup, my backup gun in my... Yeah, right? She's going to find them. There's one. No. <laughs> I know that sounds weird, but I love my backup gun just as much as I love my gun on my body, and it depends on situations. Can I get to it or not? But I like this is the best on-body, off-body variety that I can find because even though it's a bag and, oh, that's a no-no, it's attached to me in several places, and I can get to it very easily and very safely. So that's one of my go-tos, especially with outfits that I'm unsure of, it's easy. There it is. Ta-da. Done. All right. Great. Annette. So I primarily carry appendix, and I carry a little bit off-center because of the shape of my body. I have a little trouble hiding it on the right side of my body. I'm right-handed. So I move it across a little bit and put it right between, as you see, right here. And I use um, this really cool product called a Filster Enigma, and some of the ladies have seen mine. And it allows me to carry a gun in a real Kydex holster with all the concealment features and play comfortably with whatever I want to wear. So I can wear leggings, I can wear yoga pants, I can wear real pants, even though we know in this pandemic world none of us are wearing real pants unless we have to. <laughs> okay. And yes. All right. So I have thousands of hours of repetitions on my con my competition pistol drawing from right here. So I'm like, I'm going to conceal carry on my appendix a little to the right because that is where I am so used to. And under a stress situation, you're going to revert to whatever it was you used to do the longest. You know what I mean? You're, say I, you try a new position. Well, you're not, it's just not going to happen. They're gonna, you're going to revert to your old training. So if you've trained, it's al almost a training scar, but like I can't change my position of my holster because I, I have ingrained it so deeply into my mind, my heart, my body, my physicality, everything. My hand just goes right to my appendix to draw. So I'm like, okay, well, that's where I'm concealed carrying. <laughs> awesome. I can understand why you would be comfortable with that. I'm more comfortable with a shotgun, but I can't walk around town with one, right? So great question. Thank you. Come on, ladies. Here we got one over here. Okay. Go ahead, Annette. I know you're biting. <laughs> Ladies only training. It can be awesome because you find this wonderful community of people who are like you. It can be really, really comforting because, again, it's not all of this and then I have to deal with the boys club. But what I really encourage you to do after you make those initial steps, after you learn those basics, after you get comfortable, is go train with the guys too. You know, they're not as unwelcoming as you might think they will be. Uh, some of my very best friends, my brothers, really, are part of the training community. You know, these are the guys that I call in the middle of the night. These are the guys I call when I'm like, I, I need some help moving. And you know they're real friends because they actually bring a truck and help me move. So 
Ladies only training, it's a wonderful way to get your foot in the door. It's a wonderful way to bond with your sisters. But please, please, please go out and train with the guys too. You might be the only girl in the class and that's okay. What was probably gonna happen is not they're gonna go, ew, girls, she doesn't belong here. They're gonna go, oh, a girl, can you be our new sister? And they'll take care of you. Great. So please do it. Great, thank you for that question. Okay, we got one over here. So, what do you recommend for somebody who doesn't know where to start other than like looking for things for somebody like Like me? right from the beginning. Right from the beginning. First steps, don't have any idea what kind of weapon All right. you want to use. So we got, a, we got a lady interested in concealed carry. Where does she start, Beth? <laughs> There's this thing. You've not heard of it, that's okay. It's called the USCCA Concealed Carry Expo. <laughs> it's really cool. I highly recommend it. Please see if it's coming to a theater near you, right? Make sure you check into the... Okay, all jokes aside, um, USCCA is proud to offer a lot of resources and tools for you to find trainers in your area, to find really great blog posts and articles. And I think Annette actually touched on something that's worked really for me. Find a mentor. Find a mentor. Find someone you can trust, who you can talk talk about all the things like, what do I do with my gun when I go to the bathroom, right? Find that person. Find that person who will be honest and real with you, and that, that is probably more tried and true and better for you than YouTube University is awesome, but it's also full of crap, so watch out. Only find the good stuff that has like good names like Beretta and USCCA on it. Avoid the rest. Okay. Great resource. And you know what? They have an app. You go to their app and it's going to offer up a lot, of, a lot of choices for you. So, okay. Um, I think unless anybody has a question, oh, we got one right here. Red dot versus iron sight versus laser. Ooh, red dot versus iron sight versus laser. Who, who's going to take it? Jess. Good. Okay. First of all, if you've already had success training with iron sights and you're most comfortable with that, stick with that if, you, if that's, that's what me. you're comfortable with. But if you, if you, I feel like I tried out a red dot, I absolutely loved it, found that I could acquire sights and shoot accurately faster. And for some people, especially um, as we advance in age, our eyes, our eyesight and our depth perception starts to diminish. And so people who could used to be able to shoot iron sights are, are getting a little worried and then they discover the red dot and they say they can acquire it 100% all of the time. So if you're gonna put a red dot on your concealed carry gun, I just turn it on before I go out for the day, leave it on and then turn it off when I put it back into the safe or wherever. So those batteries will last a really, really long time. So I would, so I prefer red dot. Now, now that I tried it and I was like, oh, wow, I don't wanna go back. <laughs> and laser, um, you have to, it, it's, it's a tool you can utilize. Don't think that under stress you're gonna remember to turn a laser on. You don't think that you're gonna hit that button at the right place at the right time. Um, I wouldn't depend on it. It's a tool that you can use if you have time to think about. These self-defense situations, they happen so fast and so close that a laser's not gonna make a difference. You're gonna point and shoot possibly. So. The, the iron sights and the red dot are going to be there. The laser may not be, so I wouldn't put my life on, you know, that using that tool. <laughs> okay. Well, in the interest of time, we're going to wrap things up, and I'm going to thank our panelists. It's a privilege to be up here with these ladies. Thank you. Awesome.